Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again with another episode of the Tottenham career mode. And after playing three games in the previous one and not scoring a single goal, we really needed to get back on track. Of course, in the last one, there were three cup games. So we're back to league action. Crucially, we don't need to drop any points in the league. We can't afford to drop any points in the league because we really need to keep up the pressure on those two teams at the bottom of the, uh, the Champions League groups, Chelsea and Arsenal. As you can see, we're within reach of both with games in hand. So if we can pick up a positive result here against Sunderland, then uh, hopefully we can push on and maintain a position in those four Champions League spots. We actually got off to a horrible start. Jersey Elta do a breakthrough. Question of offside as the ball was played, although I think he was just on, but nonetheless it was a fantastic finish. Tidy underneath the goalkeeper and early on they took that 1-0 lead. But just before the uh, the first half ended, we were to break down the right hand side with uh, Andros Townsend into Lewis Holt. But you've got runners on the uh, on the left hand side. Sandro makes one run, Chadley makes the other. Great ball over the top and a lovely volley into the far top right hand corner. Uh, quite similar to his goal against Arsenal, actually. Breaking in down behind the wing back on that left hand side and putting a good finish across the goalkeeper into the far side of the net. And that's how we went in at half time. So there's still a lot to do. We definitely wanted to take three points from this. A game against Sunderland, which, you know, we would be expected to win by those teams around us. They'd be, you know, counting on us to pick up three points as they look towards their own sort of form and see where they need to make sure they pick up results. But Chadley really had a great chance there. You'll see from the replay, he actually had more space than I thought he did. And he probably could have rifled that into the bottom corner. But I tried to place it, just got it all wrong. And uh, unfortunately, Unfortunately, he went high and wide. Definitely not handsome. But uh, there was a nice ball played round the corner here for Josie Altador to run onto, and we got a little bit, uh, got a little bit out of sorts there with the defensive line. Again, it was quite similar to the way that they broke through for their goal early in the first half. But fortunately, this time Brad Friedel was able to make the save. But uh, they were going to get silly with the ball at the back. Chad Lee's going to break onto it. Nice little ball over the top for Jackson Martinez. Great first time control and just gets there ahead of the goalkeeper to pop the ball into the back of the net. Put a lot of power behind it to make sure if it did hit the keeper, even if he did get something on it. Probably would have gone all the way through. Just enough loft on the ball there for the uh, defender not to be able to react, get up to uh, to put a flick on it or whatever. And uh, it, Jackson Martinez was confident enough to run onto it and smash it into the back of the net. And that's how it ended. So you can see we take all three points from that one. And uh, a crucial game, but uh, there was an even bigger game on the horizon. Of course, we drew the first leg against Lazio in the uh, in the Europa League quarterfinals, nil nil at White Hart Lane. So we're having to go away to the Stadio Olimpico, looking for at least a score draw but we got off to a horrible start close a great save from Lloris there from Close's effort but uh, Lulic Senad Lulic is on hand to head into an empty net just two minutes into the game and that really put us up against it as not the start that I wanted it didn't fill me with confidence heading forward and they came very close here Hernanes to uh, picking up a second again we have to call on Lloris to make a save it's going to be Kandre that's going to take the corner he's going to whip it in from this right hand side up go the defenders we Get a little bit of a clearance on it, but it falls straight to Ledesma as he's laid off. And again, we have to rely on Hugo Lloris to make a comfortable save to keep us in the game still. But just 20 minutes after they scored, we're actually going to get a chance for Rona. Again, loose with possession down on this near side, the uh, the opposition. And Alaba is able to pick out Christian Eriksen with a lovely ball. And it's a great save from uh, from Marquette to keep us at bay. See the ball from uh, David Laba, really, really pinpoint, fast, precise, straight to his feet. And that was moving away from the goalkeeper, so that really was a very, very good save. But Christian Eriksen is going to whip the corner in. So is going to go up for it, and it's actually going to end up in the back of the net. And I think fantastic, we won it up. Ref blows his whistle. We've actually scored a legitimate goal there, but he gives a penalty for handball. You see from the replay, it actually goes through Conco's arm. It's ridiculous, stupid graphics, or stupid game. But look, it goes straight through his arm. So I guess it gave that as handball, even though it went through him. Um, you, who'd have thought in 2013 that on a football game the ball would be going through people's limbs eh? but anyway that is EA, that is this game but nonetheless Soldado puts the ball into the back of the net for a second time, unfortunately this time it counts and we do take an away goal into it, so we are level now and they came very close to go 2-1 uh, up there, it's extremely good lob Hugo Lloris got caught in no man's land really I started to bring him and thought no, no I'm not going to get there and they just kind of stopped on the penalty spot unfortunately it, uh, it went wide of that far post, went in at half time at 1-1 and as it stands we're going through an away goal, so can see at the bottom we are highlighted in blue so it, as it as things are at the minute we're going through but 55 55 is the uh, time on the clock the ball gets whipped in from the free kick Hernanes with the head a great block but it falls straight back to Hernanes really really disappointing to uh, not be able to get a clearance on that just the uh, just the dodgy block and then we actually go 2-1 behind again so we have to come back into the game get ourselves back on the score seat to stand any chance of going through to the semi-finals of European competition this year Nani cuts in so wonderfully but the defender comes across gets a block on it and unfortunately for us his block goes out for a corner whereas ours fell straight back to the guy that had the shot but 
Paulinho is breaking down the right hand side again. We're playing in Nani down this near side and hoping to uh, to pick up the ball off the uh, off the defender with a loose touch again. Finds Soldado is going to find a run inside Eric Lamella, the former Roma player coming back to Stadio Olimpico, has brought us back into the game at two two, and of course that still puts us through to the next round if we can hold on to this two two lead. Of course, Eric Lamella came to Tottenham from Lazio's fierce rivals Roma, and uh, they both share that stadium, don't they? Stadio Olimpico. So maybe Lamella felt a little bit at home. As you can see, five minutes from the end, Flaco. Clary picks up the ball, came on for closer, out to Ledesma on the right-hand side. He's going to try and whip the ball in for Clary, goes up. He uh, falls to Carl Walker, and think, great, clear it, it's fine. Hernanes has a shot. Please, someone tell me what the computer is making Carl Walker do there. Hernanes' shot is going way, way wide. It's going straight out for a goal kick. And it just makes Carl Walker take that first touch. Falls straight to the guy in the box, Senad Lulic, pick up his second, Lazio's third, and knock us out of the Europa League at the quarter-final stage. I was genuinely devastated. You can see how the players feel about it. They're all absolutely gutted. And I was as well. I just put the controller down on the floor. I was like, for fuck's sake, FIFA. Why have you done this to me? But as you can see, CSKA beat Fiorentina by the same scoreline. Udinese beat Swansea by the same scoreline. And Chelsea went one better and scored four over two legs against Real Sociedad to move them through to the semi-final. So we go out in the quarter-final of the Europa League. We go out in the quarter-final of the FA Cup. And we're still sat fifth in the Premier League. But as you can see, the board sent me a, a message that really made me uh, sit up and take note. They said, the last match was not one we wanted to see end in defeat. And we are concerned it may have negatively affected your stock amongst the supporters. The board wants to reassure that we're behind you. We would also like to see noticeable changes approaching future important matches. So I'm really going to have to make sure that we keep up some performance levels. Make sure that we crack on in the league and get those Champions League spots because clearly the board aren't necessarily too happy with our performances in the Cups despite quarter-final appearances and two big trophies and we got quite far in the League Cup as well. Um, the board just aren't entirely uh, happy and satisfied with what we've been delivering so far this season. So I'm doing a squad... Pro a squad I'll start that again. We're doing a squad report in the background so feel free to pause it at any point if there's any particular player that you would like to have a look at and see how his stats are developing. Quite a few players are actually coming along quite nicely. Uh, a couple in particular are uh, really progressing, gaining uh, two or three different stats. Uh, two or three overall rather, as well as quite a few individual stats. But uh, we're, we're doing quite nicely as a team. The whole team is progressing. But um, it's still clearly the board just aren't. It, the board don't feel it's good enough. So I'm going to have to pull my finger out over the next couple of weeks and try and pick up some results in the Premier League. At the current stage of uh, this particular episode, I think we still have that game in hand against the two teams above. I think we've got two games in hand on Arsenal now, and one on Chelsea, or vice versa. I know we've got a couple of games in hand on one of them, and uh, that's definitely going to be something we're going to have to take advantage of in the next couple of weeks, picking up some results if we possibly can, because I really do want to have Champions League football next season. We're going to be able to fit in another season before uh, or at least most of another season hopefully we'll be able to fit in a full season before the uh, before the next gen release comes out and we start the one at Chelsea so fingers crossed we're able to do that but uh, yeah that is going to bring this particular episode to a close guys so do feel free to leave the video a like if you did enjoy of course feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already we have recently hit 3,000 subscribers which is absolutely wonderful thank you so much for that and uh, there will be a link to do so in the description and an annotation on screen uh, over the end slate which is coming up on screen in just a minute as we back out of the of the squad report and then have a quick look at the league table as you can see we do in fact have those games in hand two on Arsenal one on Chelsea so I was correct uh, two points behind Arsenal three points behind Chelsea so we're in touch the only thing that is a little bit lax is our goal difference so if we can pick up the results and get convincing results with a lot of goals on the table or goals on the cards then hopefully then uh, we can cement our place in uh, in those top four spaces but we've got eight games left to do it so uh, fingers crossed we can do and come back next time and uh, we'll see what goes on but of course tomorrow will be Pac-Man it is Wednesday tomorrow so we go Karimo Karimo Pac-Man Karimo Karimo Pac-Man squad builder or ultimate team video that isn't uh, isn't of any kind of series so like I say link on screen to subscribe if you haven't already over the subscribe button link to the previous episode over the play button if you uh, missed that so feel free to check that out and uh, that is going to bring this one to a close for me guys so thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time